What's up students? It's your boy Mr. Siegel here to tell you a little bit about circles today. Now I know what you're thinking. I know what a circle is. It's that thing right in front of my face. And you'd be 100% correct. But today I want to go over a few more definitions so we have a little bit of vocabulary to discuss circles going forward. So let's look at this guy. Yes, this is a circle, but the formal definition of a circle is it's the set of all the points that are the same distance away from a specific point called the center. So each one of these points on the outside is the same distance away from the center. And what do we call these? Radii, or the radius, is always the same distance away from the center of the circle. Now, I know you guys remember what a radius is. It's this line right here. It goes from the center to the outside. Do you guys remember what happens if it goes all the way across? What do we call that? That's right, the diameter. And the diameter is twice the distance of the radius. It's two radiuses. Those are the most basic definitions, but let's get into a few more. Now, you see this sketch over here. These are the different words we're going to be discussing. A secant, a diameter, a chord, and a tangent line. So let's get these down. Please, let's take some notes. Let's look at these. A secant line is a line that intersects a circle at two points. Now what does that mean? Let's say I have this line right here. I'm going to start it right over here and it's going to be drawn going through this circle. This is what we would call a secant line because it intersects our circle at these two points. And that would be all. It could go through any side. This would be a secant. We could even call this a secant line. As long as it goes through a circle, it's a line going through a circle, and intersects at two points. So we have two different secant lines here. A chord is a line segment whose endpoints are on the circle. So it's a little different than a secant line because it actually has two endpoints that end up on the circle. It doesn't go through it. It just goes right inside of it. And its endpoints are on the outside. So that would be considered a chord. And this would be considered a chord. And notice the difference between these two lines, a secant and a chord. A secant goes all the way through. It's a line continuing through. And a chord has its endpoints on the outside of the circle. A diameter is a chord. But it's a very special kind of chord because this chord goes through the center of the circle. So if this is my center right here, my chord, or this diameter, would have to go right through the center. That would be considered a diameter because it goes through the center of the circle. As long as it goes through the center, it's a diameter. So this would also be, oh, that's a bad line. That would also be considered a diameter. And so, oh, and so would that. Notice how all these lines go through the center. Finally, we're going to look at tangent. A tangent line intersects the circle at exactly one point. So this is on the outside of the circle. So let's say we have a point right here. A tangent line, which comes from the word to touch, touches the circle at just one point on the outside. So let's get a little better drawing. Oh, oh, no, that doesn't even look nice. Let's try this one more time. I'm going to try this one more time. I'm going to make it a little better. Let's say I have a point right here. All right, and the line, nope, I messed it up again. This time I'm definitely going to get it. Here we go. This is it. Check it out. We have our point right here. And the line goes through, oh, and touches it right there. Perfect. It's a straight line that intersects the circle at exactly one point on the outside. Remember, tangent means to touch. So these are your four basic definitions. A secant, which goes through the circle. We have a chord, who has endpoints on the outsides of the circle. We have a diameter, which has to go, it's a chord that goes through the center, right over here. And finally, a tangent. All right. Now these are the final three definitions we're going to look at. Now looking up here, this is what we call a central angle. A central angle, as you can see below it, is the angle created by drawing two radii from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle. So this is what we call a central angle. I drew two lines, two lines, two radiuses to the outside of the circle, and there's an angle formed right here. And this would be called the central angle. So we would call this angle AOB. 
and this is what we call a central angle. So if I were to draw it, a picture of that, that would just look like this. I draw any two lines, any two radiuses from the center, and this would be my central angle. An arc is what is created with the two central angles. So what do I mean by that? So the arc is a line segment whose points are along the outside of the circle. So here's the outside of the circle. I have two endpoints, and the arc is actually the line segment that goes along the outside. So this is what we call an arc. It's just a line segment that goes along the outside of the circle. And here are its endpoints. And finally, we have a sector. A sector is the portion of a circle that's inside the central angle in the arc. So let's say I draw this. Here's my central angle. I'm going to draw a little circle. Here's my center. Here are my two lines to create my central angle. And here's my arc that's created by the central angle. The sector would be this area on the inside. That's what we call a sector. Okay, so these are all your basic definitions. You have central angle, arc, sector, and from the last page, we have secant, we have chord, diameter, and tangent. Know these and you are good to go.